Welcome again uh, to the Wolves and Moose of Isle Royal. In this short lecture, I just want to say a little bit about uh, the nature of Isle Royal itself, the island, because uh, it, it figures into why the study has been, has been valuable to science in general. And in, and in fact, in the, in the last couple of lectures, I've emphasized that one of the great values of the Isle Royal Wolf Moose Project is that it's just gone on for such a long time. And while that's true, there's another really key uh, idea as, as to why the Isle Royal Wolf Moose Project has been so valuable. And it basically has to do with the fact that Isle Royal is an island. And uh, just a, a couple of you know images to give us a sense of, of that. This is an aerial photographer, an aerial photograph of the island from the northeast end, looking towards the southwest. In the summertime, if you're to stand on the shore of Isle Royal and, and look out across the lake, this is what it looks like. It's it's water for as for as far as you can see, uh, for the most part. And in the winter time, when the sun's not quite so high, and the light is a little bit more stunning, and there's ice flowing around, this is what the scene looks like. And so, islands have been these special places for understanding evolution and ecology for as long as those fields of inquiry have been around. You know, one of the very first and most famous examples of this are Darwin's finches in the Galapagos Islands. A great deal of Darwin's insights came from understanding how it is that different species occurred on different islands and how it was that they were different. This is just one example. And, and to give one other example, uh, the islands, uh, the, the Melanesian islands in the, in the South Pacific, in particular the ants that live on these islands. This is a, a large, large collection of islands. And on those islands are many different species of ants. <clears throat> and this is one of the very first places where we learned that when the size of the island gets bigger, there end up being a greater number of different species of ants on these islands. This is the notion of species area curves. Islands were important in figuring that out. Not surprisingly, island biogeography is, an, is another very important uh, way in which islands have contributed to our understanding, understanding of ecology in general. And of course, island biogeography uh, is, is, is a pretty important theory for understanding how it is that populations go extinct and, and this kind of a thing. <clears throat> now, Isle Royal is an island, of course, and, uh, and it has figured in, in a rather important way for kind of understanding ecology. Uh, and, and, and to get into some ideas about why and how, let's make some comparisons between the mainland, just right next to Isle Royal, say the southern part of Canada, northeast part of Minnesota, and, and then Isle Royal itself. We'll make a comparison between the mainland and the island. First of all, just how many species are there of mammals now? On the mainland, there are 51 species of mammals. On Isle Royal, just 19. Well, why are there fewer mammals on Isle Royal? For two reasons. One is that it's harder for a mammal to get to Isle Royal than it is to, to be on the mainland. They have to swim or fly or, or walk across an ice bridge, something like this, and it's just it's harder to do so. The other thing is, is that because Isle Royal is smaller, well, it means that once an animal gets there, it's more likely to go extinct. And, uh, and so these two processes, the difficulty of getting there and then the difficulty of, of, of persisting uh, on the island, these uh, cause Isle Royal to have uh, fewer species than the mainland. This is, in a nutshell, what island biogeography is all about. And just to give a, a few more examples, because they're, they're Ill illustrative, on the mainland, there are 19 species of mammal that are smaller than a red squirrel. This would in include red squirrels, a variety of different species of, of mice and shrews and voles. They all add up to about 19 different species. On Isle Royal, there's only one species smaller than a red squirrel, and that would be something called the deer mouse or uh, Paramiscus maniculatus is the Latin name. For bats, on the mainland, there are about six species of bats, uh, and on Isle Royal, there are also six species of bats. Of course, bats can fly, and so that's how it is that there's basically no difference uh, in, in mammals there. Okay, so there's fewer mammals on Isle Royal than on the mainland. Well, what, who cares about that and, and what's important about that? A couple of things. First of all, a couple of species in particular that have never made it to Isle Royal. One would be white-tailed deer, and the, others, the other species would be black bear in particular. And then some species that used to be there but are no longer there would be caribou and coyotes. Caribou went extinct right around the 20th century, the beginning of the 20th century. They went extinct due to a combination of the habitat changed in a way that was no longer suitable for the caribou, and then people were hunting them. 
coyotes went extinct in about the year 1950. And they went extinct shortly after wolves arrived to the island. Uh, wolves and coyotes compete with one another, and so uh, that's how it is that the coyotes went extinct. Moose, we know moose are on Isle Royale, that's what we're talking about. How did they get there? When? They got there in about the year 1900, and most likely the way that they got there is that they swam. Well, if they swam, why didn't it say something like white-tailed deer swim or something like this? Basically, it's the, the body size of a moose is, is, is sufficiently large that it can tolerate the cold waters of Lake Superior and, uh, you know, not, not freeze to death. Uh, deer are not big enough for that to happen. What happens for deer is every now and again they do get in the water and then they start swimming and then they sometimes wash up dead on the shores of Lake Superior, but they never survive the cold waters. Again, the waters of Lake Superior are just a few degrees above freezing, even in the summertime. Wolves, how did wolves get to Isle Royale? They got to Isle Royale in about the year 1949, plus or minus a year or two. And they got there by walking across on a frozen ice bridge. For wolves, that's not a big deal. Wolves will walk on ice that humans would consider to be just dangerously thin, an inch or two of ice, and wolves are happy to walk on it. Um, and then it's about 15 miles, about 24 kilometers, that separates Isle Royale from the mainland. And so for wolves to walk that distance, uh, they can do that in, in just a, a few hours time and so uh, it, it's not difficult to imagine that they would have gotten there. So as you know the purpose of the Isle Royal Wolf Moose Project is to understand the nature of predation and on Isle Royal there's basically only one large predator, the wolf, and only one large prey, the moose and so that makes the business of understanding predation relatively easy. If you like, it's kind of a simplified food web. There's only this one double-pointed arrow to kind of figure out uh, what's happening. If we were to consider another place like Yellowstone, which is representative of, of more places in the world where there are large predators, here the main large predator would be the wolf, and the main prey would be the elk. But they're not the only creatures that are there. Turns out there are other species of prey that are common for the wolves. They also eat bison, they eat mule deer. There's even a, a few other species, pronghorn elk, uh, bighorn sheep, mountain goats. Uh, these creatures all are prey for the wolves. What I've listed here are kind of the important ones. But it turns out that, well, so if you wanted to understand predation, you've got to understand all three of those arrows uh, connecting these four different species. It's more than that, though, because wolves are not the only predator. There are also mountain lions, and mountain lions prey on, in particular, elk and deer. And then there are grizzly bears. Grizzly bears prey also on elk and deer. And then when wolves make a kill, for example, of a bison, then there is competition for that carcass with mountain lions and bears. And it gets more complicated. It turns out that humans are involved with interacting importantly with all of these species. In the case of elk, for example, will, uh, humans hunt elk. While it is that wolves are protected uh, in Yellowstone National Park, they still get killed by humans. They get killed uh, when they leave the park occasionally and, and then get poached. And, and it goes on and on. Humans are involved in basically affecting this, every one of these species. So if you want to understand predation, you have to understand all of those interconnecting arrows in the Yellowstone food web. While there's great merit in, it, in, in trying to do so, uh, it, it's a pretty complicated picture. And ecologists sometimes appreciate this idea of, well, maybe a simpler place is, is something we can glean some insights with. And Isle Royale has been exactly that. And so if you like, Isle Royale is, is basically, it's not too big and it's not too small, it's not too close, and it's not too far. It's just the right size and just the right distance from the mainland so that uh, wolves and moose managed to get there. If Isle Royale had been too far from the mainland, wolves and moose never would have gotten there. If Isle Royale were closer to the mainland, very likely white-tailed deer would have made it. Maybe coyotes would come occasionally as well. And then, of course, if Isle Royale were much smaller than it is now, the wolves wouldn't have persisted as long as they already have, and then you wouldn't have a predator-prey system. And then, actually, actually, if Isle Royale had been a little bit bigger, things would be different, too. If Isle Royale were bigger, it would be pretty difficult for us to study the moose population as well as we do. Right now, there's, on average, about 1,000 moose, and that's just, a, it seems like a, that's plenty enough to kind of have to figure out and walk across the island, perform necropsies, and that sort of a thing. If the island were bigger... 
Say twice as big, there'd be twice as many moose, there'd be twice as many necropsies for us to, to figure out, there'd be twice as uh, many miles we would have to hike in order to get to those necropsies and so on. And so that's why it it's really is the case, what I said just a minute ago, that Isle Royal, it's, you know, it's not too big and it's not too small, not too close, not too far. It's, it's just the right size to have a single species of predator, the wolf, and a single species of prey, the moose. And that simplicity has been one of the things that's made Isle Royal such a valuable place to study wolves and moose. And so that's all that I want to say in, in this particular lecture is just to make that rather simple point about I Isle Royal's island biogeography. And in the next lecture that we speak about, we're going to talk about another way of analyzing uh, the, the wolf and moose time series. And so that's all for now. Thank you very much, and we'll see you during the next lecture.